camp right there and God really moved us to be able to just go witness to her and come to find out she's a Christian. She reads the Bible every morning and she just really was open to us going out there and praying for us and um, I think we missed going by one Thursday and uh, we go out there every Thursday. We miss um, going by there one Thursday and she just said how much it meant to her to be able to receive prayer for us to love on her and it really made her day and so Pastor Walt um, said that out of that we could ask her if she wanted to come into the program despite um, her age and her condition and she denied it and that just really hurt my heart that men and women would just settle for what's going on out there, that they would settle to be homeless and lonely. Um, yeah. Here, I want to ask you a question. See, God says, Father God, make it just as a minute. Go all the way and preach the gospel. She did it. Now, I'm just going to ask her, she might, whatever's on her heart, if that didn't stir her up to get her fired up, to get the Lord really working in her, I don't know what posture it could have done that. I mean, it could have really done that. If it hadn't been for the Lord, she's all part of it. What did that do to you? Just going out there and telling her how much love about those people and bust the loose with... How many times did you go back and get a whole box of food and take it back to a bunch of other people and jump off the bus? Stop here, stop there, I gotta talk to this one. Well, Pastor Walt kind of let me take over Thursdays when he drives the bus, and it was just... <laughs> It meant so much to me um, to be able to be a part of just serving men and women, uh, getting away from myself and just pouring into them and pouring into them really did something for me. God uh, has done so much ministering to my heart, going out there, being on the bus, seeing like what type of condition that these people are in and knowing that if I didn't turn and let God be God in my life, that I could be out there on the corners doing the same thing that they're doing. So it's just, it's opened my eyes and to know that God's a reckless lover and he loves us no matter what's going on, it just shows me that I need to do that for others. And I love this ministry that that's what happens is that we're pouring into people that are overlooked or walked by and just to know that they're there and they're alive and to be able to go show them love and let them know that, hey, no matter what, people do care about you. That it's not really about feeding, it's about showing love over and over again until they get it. A lot of people didn't want to get on the bus and they would cuss me out, but just keep on going, just not stopping, letting God work in your life and just no matter if they deny you yes or no, just to know that one day they're going to feel that love. And at the end of the day, we all need Christ. We all desire friendship and we all desire love. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Anyway, that stuff. You have to remember, it's God working in us, doing His will, His will. Now here's a new thing I want you to realize. It's God working in us. God works in us. When you open your heart to let Him come in, you think He just sits in there and stagnates? Oh, Jesus loves me. Yeah, He does. And He's stirring you. He's working in you. He's working out His plan. And His plan is the Lord's plan, like I said. We become more like Him. He makes us more like Him. So He's working in us, doing His will, His will is crazy. Now remember, it's His will that then perish. So he puts that in our heart. Oh, man, we'll make a decision man. And that's why I question. If you're not truly going out and minister to people, is you, you just, I, I question if your relationship is right with God. It could be fear. It could be whatever else. Or, or you know, I've been called to do that. Yeah, you have. We're all called to do that. There's gifts, yes. But that soul winning is not a gift. It's a command. And see, once you start doing that, and then God just seems to pour back into you, it's kind of like doing those you'd have others do unto you. You know, when you go out and love somebody, care for somebody, like Jamie, I used to get the biggest kick out of her. She'd get so excited, she'd be bouncing all over her place. She might have been just going there and taking it out. She wasn't fired. She got a little fired up. But that's what happens to you. You get so fired up. Man, just by just simply doing the simple will of God. Following Him. Huh? Wish those trees could talk.
God's glorified by what trees do because they don't know no better. But we do, because we got choice. We know a lot better, don't we? Who? You know. All we do is mess things up. Amen. But you know what? No matter what, God will straighten them out. And that's what's so neat about the people living in jail, like we go to jail prisons on the streets, every place we go. And we see people who are truly, truly hurting, bound up by drugs, alcohol, so despondent, you know, all the above, knowing that God can more than change them. Because he says, you do, I'm going to go with you. And what he says, if any man be in Christ, I'm a new, they're new creatures. God changes us. He changes them. They got a new heart. They got a new mind. They got a new start. Over. That's the truth. You know what the Apostle Paul said? He was doing it wrong and got saved. Think about that. He was held back on doing everything he wanted to do. Because, in fact, there's a scripture in the Bible. Just a minute. Is there a, uh, something I put my Bible on the stand? I'm going to read this scripture. I just thought I knew to a music stand or something? You don't have the music stand? Okay. Let me just... Oh, Monday, bro. That's fine. If I can just put this down for a second. Good to see you. Have a good day. Yes, this is the one. rest of the day. Yeah. Now listen to this. Paul was extremely successful. The Apostle Saul, right? He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was a Roman citizen, which was quite an honor in those days. And... He came from the best family and so forth, and I'm sure he was wealthy and highly, highly, highly educated. In fact, he was brilliant, and he had a desire in his heart, just like many of us do, to become successful. And all his job was, is to stop this Christianity thing, the thing that was called the way, because they were interfering with his church. And he was very, very zealous. He was hell-bent on putting them down. Amen? So, he got letters, he got authority from the high priest to go to Damascus and really just put down people there because they tried, they really tried to serve this, this way. It's one way Jesus got a hold of them and knocked them to the ground. That's like many of us. What happened to you when the <laughs> first spoke to you? When it was time for you to get saved? Did you both go right to complain? I'm not ready to run around and on. You know what Paul did? He says, who art thou, Lord? What are you telling me? What do you want me to do? And you know what he did? Exactly what God told him to do. And he switched gears. He was going to switch clarity. He was going one way, he turned around, went the other way. And you know what he says? I want you to listen to this. He's very successful. And in Romans 3, 7, says, I once thought all these things were so very important. That's like somebody being successful. Having all kinds of money, position, all of the above, right? I once thought all these things were so very important, but now I count them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared to the priceless day of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. I can't read because I'm you know, you know what, when something don't work, guess what you do? I quit, I can't do this. Come on. When you got that mercy against you, what do you do? You praise the Lord. You just let God be God, right? There's always a better way, another way. Sunglasses on. Now I can see. He says, I have discarded everything else, counting it as garbage. All excess success he had in this world, counting it as garbage. You know what the King James says? Done. He's counting it all as done. So that I might have Christ to become one with Him. I no longer count on my own goodness or my ability to obey God's law, but I trust Christ to save me. For God's way of making me right with Himself depends on faith. As a result, I can know, really know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised Him from death. You know what happens when you become a Christian? That same mighty power works in you. The Bible says that same spirit that was in Christ is in us. That raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. That raised us from the dead. Didn't our trespassing sins give us that new heart, that new mind, the power, the authority. The trample on serpents and scorpions were all the power there. Ain't nothing going to be able to stop us. Is that what he's talking about here? Yeah. He says, as we go, I can really know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead.